Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. So today we're going to add a bridge rectifier to our toroidal transformer so that we can see what full wave rectification looks like. We did that before in the last video with a center tap transformer. This time we're going to use a bridge rectifier, okay? And uh, something like this, but we're actually going to use a discrete diode so we can see. Uh, it's a little bit easier to show, I think. And we're going to look at the uh, thermal imaging of how they heat up. We're going to look at the waveforms on the scope. We're going to talk about the differences between the center tap and the bridge, the advantage, some of the pros and cons. And uh, we got a schematic here in our notebook that we'll look at. And we also have the Keithley uh, THD meter. So we're going to look at THD and power factor. Uh, that, those two measurements are going to become more important and more interesting later on as in the next video when we add capacitors and so I want to show the uh, you know the kind of the uh, the progress towards a full power supply and what power factor and distortion uh, looks like at different phases okay so we can see the effects of different parts of the uh, circuit the components then we see how to uh, take advantage or change some of these things All right hey let's do it uh, let's jump in this video and get this one done All right thanks guys thanks for watching okay guys this is how we started in part three we showed the transformer how we hooked it up to the primary side of the uh, power we have the power plug the switch, the fuse, and the thermistor. And we actually put the thermistor down here because it's just easy for me to wire it up. And as long as it's in a series path here, uh, these windings are actually in parallel, but those, other than those being in parallel, just think of that as one winding here. Uh, it's just a series path from the power from these devices. And as far as these devices, I'll go in series, okay? And then we have two secondaries. And what we did is we showed how we could get uh, an output voltage that's fully rectified, so it's got Paul saying DC with two diodes using the center tap. So we just center tap these, and we get one pulse when the waveform is positive, and when it goes negative, then this becomes positive down here, and we get this positive pulse. So we get, you know, two po two pulses. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to this. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention is, is this is an isolated winding, this is an isolated winding. When we hook it up this way, it, it, it makes it look like one big winding with the center tap, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to do it in a way where, just zoom out so I can see everything for a minute. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook it this way. So we're going to just, this black and red winding is right here just like it was here, black and red, and orange and yellow. So we're just, right now we're gonna just demonstrate one winding, okay? So you can hook up the second winding the same way and you have two independent separate voltages. So now we have a single output voltage here and we get a second output voltage off the other one. What it costs us is four diodes instead of two. What we get is two output windings. And so now we can have a plus minus for our audio amplifiers. Or we can have two pluses or two minuses for that matter. So uh, we've got options because there are isolated windings up here. Okay. Um, so here, let's come down here and see how, just follow the path so we can see how that works. Okay, so I'll leave this so you can see this, kind of compare it in your, you know, if you want to go back and forth. But in this one, when it's plus, we get an output here and it goes through the load and returns center tap. Then when the voltage flips, and this one's reverse biased, then when it flips over and it, the plus is down here and this is minus, that's reverse biased and this one's forward biased because these uh, arrows point the direction of forward current uh, plus to minus. And so they're steering diodes, right? They steer the, the currents. So down here we have four steering diodes. So this top diode when this is plus, it's it's saying, hey, I'll send current this way. Sends it out here to the load, comes back here. Now we have two diodes. We have to get back to this red one, so we go through this bottom diode here. 
back to red. So there's our pass, there's our circle right there, the two outside diodes. Then when the voltage flips over and this is negative, now that's blocked. So, hey, that one looks okay. And down here on the red, it's positive now. So that one's blocked now, but this one's good to go. So the plus goes this way through the negative and back here to the top, okay? So now that way when the transformer is going plus to minus, plus to minus, um, it has a, a way to circulate current in either way. And so what you get here is on this v, uh, plus V, you get uh, pulsating DC, okay? So let's go look at the scope and see what that looks like. But just before we do that, I just want to show you a couple uh, bridge rectifiers. Okay, just real quickly, um, if you look at this, these two are flat, going they're, they're going the same direction, but these two are not. One is going uh, kind of this direction, okay? And if you notice, this one has a little cut here in the corner. This one doesn't. But if we come up here and look at it, we'll see that's the plus terminal, and this is the plus terminal. So the plus terminal is the kind of the oddball, okay? And then the opposite corner is the minus. This one's not marked. This one is. It's marked minus. And then the these two opposing corners are AC uh, waveforms. If you can see that, min here's a minus, straight line, wiggly line, AC. Flip it over. Kind of see the wiggly line over here in this corner. And over here, you see the plus. Then it has the mounting bolt right there. It has the heat sink here. To So there's four diodes inside there. There's four of these diodes down inside here connected to these terminals. They're, they're wired like this, and the heat sink helps get the heat out of them. This guy, the whole, whole can is metal, so um, it allows you to get the heat out maybe a little bit better, maybe, because it feels like this is plastic around the outside. It looks like it. Okay, now what we're going to do on this circuit that I'm going to show you. We're going to use these kind of diodes. They come off a of tape and reel. If you notice, the top of these diodes are silver. That's this cathode bar. Can you see that? And and I guess red is another indicator. So when the guys take, this comes on a big reel. It's called a tape and reel because it's taped and it's on a reel. Like a big, you know, it's just coiled up. And then it goes on a machine and it comes off and the machine grabs these things and bends them and puts them in a board. So, um, so anyway, that's what it looks like. We're going to use these kind because it's more obvious. It'll look more like this. So I'm going to use these. Okay. They don't have a lot of power, but you know what? What I'll do is I'll. It's great because I can show you what power does. I'll show you with this thermal imaging camera, um, the dissipation. Okay. And by the way, these came in a little thing like this. These are 1N 5404s. And they come in all kinds of, you know, they come in the whole series. I showed that data sheet in the last video. So for sake of going quick, we're not, we won't show that again. Okay, let's go look at the setup. Okay guys, here's the test setup. Um, we have the input power coming in here. Goes to this little power quality meter, little cord I made, and the black wire comes up here, goes to the switch, and then through this fuse, and then connects here to the blue and uh, purple wire of the transformer. Then it comes out of the gray and brown, goes to this thermistor, to the red wire, using these waggle type connectors, and then it comes back to the other side of this. Uh, my power cord, okay? Not using ground, everything's just floating, that's fine. Not worried about that. Um, I'm using this load resistor, this 8 ohm 200 watt resistor. It's tied into here, the output of the circuit here, okay? Got the scope and the THD meter. So that's what all these wires are. And the uh, then I got the red, black one going to the multimeter over here. And so we'll watch that with the scope, okay? And then I'll take this guy and I'll hook it into the primary wire so we can watch the primary side current. And then I'll come over here and I'll hook it into the secondary side, okay? 
a hook on the output. And what I'm also going to do is hook it across one of these diodes like that. Okay, so I'm going to show you those waveforms. All right, so we're going to go to our scope and do that, and I'll tell you when I'm on the primary side, the secondary side, output, or around diode. Okay, and we'll look at those things. So, of course, the signal scope over there, the astro multimeter, and then the uh, thermometer, uh, so we can look at the temperature of these diodes. Okay, so I think that's all the stuff we're going to look at. Oh, and then there's also the distortion meter, which is right there. That's the THD meter, the Keithley THD meter. Okay, I'll, I'll just read off the numbers probably because we'll be looking at the scope. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, guys, and the other thing I want to show you real quick is the measurements that we got from the uh, power quality meter. When we did the center tap, so we got the wattage here, okay, and the power factor, and the current. And I think what we're going to see when we do it with the full bridge is we're going to see similar measurements. So let's just do it, okay? And just to mention, I've got the hand tech in the times 10 position, the middle one, because we're reading lower currents here. So I'm in that scale, and on the scope I have it set for times 10 to match this. So I, we can read it directly from the scope, okay? Okay guys, let's turn it on, see what happens. Got the switch here, okay? Turn it on. There we go. Okay, so what do we have here? We have um, about three quarters of an amp. That's 756 uh, milliamps, and about 25 volts RMS. Now you notice the um, this this is on the primary side the current the purple and this is the secondary voltage so see where the uh, reference is for the current right in the middle and the voltage is right down here at zero so it's all pulsing DC the current's AC and you see when it's plus we get a pulse here when it's minus this one gets flipped over it's up here so the frequency up here in the voltage is twice the frequency is um, the input which is 60 Hertz so we got you know 120 Hertz out here okay and this guy is oops that's on AC okay there we go 22.5 so true RMS and average is about 10 percent difference in the reading oh and just to uh, here let's expand this current okay um, this is 0.5 uh, amps per division. Center taps right here, so it's one, two divisions in a little bit. And we got just over 0.77, or it's about 0.78 amps RMS. So the equation for RMS current on this, it's just a sine wave, right? So it's just the uh, IM, the, ma the maximum amplitude of the current, divided by square root of two right so that looks about right so I've moved the current probe to the secondary the output so let's see what it looks like going to the load to the resistor oops rough scale because I amplified it before okay so there we go we're at one amp per division and it's starting here so see it's like the voltage now it starts at zero because it's on the secondary side so it's just the current into the load just like this uh, voltage so now we have 3.25 amps RMS and about 25 volts RMS all right so um, it's about one two whoops one two three four and a half four and a half volts 3.18 so that's 4.5 volts divided by square root of two should give us the RMS okay so this is something I want to show you I've put the current clamp on one of the diodes like I showed so now we're just seeing current going through one diode you see how it's in phase with the voltage nice sinusoidal pulses just like we've been seeing and uh, one thing I like to comment is about that goes is THD looks pretty good uh, actually THD is about 22.5 about the same as it was with the center tap so not much difference and what I like to say about that is the pulse Pulsing DC looks kind of like sinusoidal. It's pretty clean looking. Wait until we add a capacitor. That's when we're going to see things change as far as that goes. Okay. So anyway, let's get to this because the load's heating up. <laughs> um, 
the current says it's about 2.28 so RMS current for half for each diode um, what it is is basically the IM the max current divided by 2 so it's five and a half divided by two. Okay, it's a little different, right? Before when we had the sinusoidal thing where we don't have a break, it's just like normal. RMS current is like a sinusoid was uh, divided by square root two. But in the case where we have pulsating DC, uh, meter won't shut off. Um, in the case where it's pulsating DC, it's just um, max divided by square root two. All right, just want to talk about that but now think about that two point uh, say two and a quarter amps going through that diode that amp that diode is rated for max of three uh, amps RMS uh, continuous if you remember from the data sheet from last video okay now let's go look at the thermal camera and I also want to kind of show the diode circuit which I haven't done yet okay let's go down and do that and you can see the current clamp on it there we go alright so I've taken off the current clamp off the diode I just want to show you the uh, connections from the transformer okay the red and black come from the transformer and they go to basically this bridge rectifier they basically go to the AC connections just like on this where it shows the little squiggly line the AC and then the other corners that corner right there is the AC you can see that but okay so um, so these diodes are, are the same way okay I just kind of zoomed in to see if you can see that a little more clearly see the striped sides the two striped ones of these two diodes here go to this plus the two anodes go to the minus on this so the ACs have one one stripe and one non stripe same here Okay, that's the way they connect. All right, guys, what I'm gonna do is I turn the lights down a little bit. I'm gonna hold the camera over here. See, we're gonna, I'm gonna hit the switch right now. Okay, now we're gonna watch those diodes heat up. Now the way this thermal camera works is this: there's a temperature sensor in the center and it gives readout up here. And then there's a red one that jumps around going to the hottest thing. And there's a green one that jumps around trying to find the uh, coldest spot. So I can move the center one to a hot spot. And you can see the bar over here, white is the hottest, red, and goes down to green and blue. This little bar along the side here. And so see this guy here? If I put the center thing on a resistor, you can see, or I mean a diode, You can see it's going up 60 degrees. So now, if you remember from the data sheet from the last video, these diodes had a temperature, a thermal impedance junction, the ambient of 15 degrees per watt. So if we're putting in about two and a quarter watts, or two and a quarter amps in the diode, and say it's 0.7 volts, Let's just say it's around 2 watts. That's about uh, 30 degree rise. So we're for around 20 degrees Celsius, it should be around 50, 60 degrees. But, um, th but that's the ideal thing if they have the right, if they can shed some heat, like on the circuit board. But okay, so you can see right there, it's about 71 degrees. They get pretty hot. It's only been on for a little bit. Now if they're mounted to a board, the board can help cool them, taking the heat out of the leads. But here, I'll see if I can freeze that. There's that image I saved. It looks like it was about 78 degrees, the hot spot. That's kind of what it looks like. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you was the current, 7.3 amps. We, we kind of saw that before in the scope. 60 hertz, 0.999 power factor. Pretty darn good. By the way, distortion is 22.4 THD. And there's the our heat sink after power shut off. Still pretty hot. <laughs> kind of cool looking.